I was studying with uh, Alan Wallace at the time, mm -hmm. and I also uh, had taken a bunch of classes with Eitan at the Kabbalah Center, and and there was one thing that resonated with me that Eitan, a, a story that he told in class one day, and he said, he said, because, you know, I wanted to know why bad things happen to people, and he said, do you know what the true Kabbalists did? when they were brought out at Auschwitz to be shot, he said they danced. They danced to thank God for giving them hatred to overcome. So that understanding of uh, that type of God, I found very interesting, just like I told the story about His Holiness the Dalai Lama, um, and I also, I want to stress that I do not consider Buddhism to be a religion. You know, there are people who follow the Dharma. It's a prescription to alleviate suffering. And there's people who do not follow the Dharma, but there's no such thing as a Buddhist in, in, in my understanding. So for me, when I was at UCSB, Alan Wallace was studying. Uh, he has a degree from Stanford University in physics and um and he has been a uh, translator for His Holiness Dalai Lama for a long time. And he just, during the summer, Eitan had told me that there are levels of reality and that um, the word in uh, Hebrew is tikkun, uh, which is correction. And then it's similar uh, in Sanskrit uh, to karma. So basically Eitan had explained to me that the better you act, the, you bounce up to different levels of reality. There are infinite levels of reality happening right now. There's a level of reality where I walk out this door and an elephant falls from the sky and kills me, right? It's not highly probable, but that is a reality that exists right there. And I, we can only see through our five senses uh, this plane of reality. And so Eitan had told me about these levels of reality and that kind of made sense to me for some reason. And then when I went to UCSB and studied with Alan Wallace, he had talked about probability waves and collapsing and, and physics. And that's why I told in that story about um, hearing voices or, or my, like, why my life was meaningful because As I said, there was no, um, at any point in time during those 25 years, if someone said, you're going to make meditation DVDs, you're going to be a psychotherapist, you're going to do this, it wouldn't have made sense. But I felt like all of the probability waves collapsed when that young woman came in and put her hands down and I heard, you need to make you yoga DVDs. And by the same token, you know, I don't I mean, I ask musicians all the time, where do songs come from, you know? And I, and I truly believe, um, like Elizabeth Gilbert in her TED talk, you know, we're, like we're conduits, you know, we're, we, we, I, I mean, I, I receive bits and pieces of, of, of things and I scribble them down and I don't know what they mean. And I don't know where they come from, and I'm just kind of startled, like, wow, that's a that's a interesting title, or wow, that's a thing, that's a that could be a that's a, mm. and then all of a sudden, something, it comes together. It, this is my creative process. I don't know if it's anybody else's, and um, but I'll just show you. I've been carrying I, <laughs> since 1991. I carry around this this agenda, right? And and I go to Paris every year, and I pick one up, and I just and I write down like. Uh, Little notes. This one says uh, Camille Paglia uh, said that the French export uh, high art to America and we export uh, lowbrow culture to them. And then, uh, you know, I just have like these these little things and um, that I remember. And then all of a sudden they form something. And 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 then then I look at it and, you know, I do that thing that all writers do. I'm like, oh, my God. 
God, this I'm a fucking genius. And this is amazing. I'm the next Shakespeare. And then two minutes later, I look at it and I was like, this is shit. You're an idiot. And then I, I like kind of want to hit the delete button, but I don't. And then I just leave it there. And at some point in time, I'm like, oh, that's the clay. And just what Michelangelo says, Michelangelo said about the, 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 um, the, the slaves that he had, he said, he said, he didn't, he didn't sculpt the, the slaves. He just removed the rock. So it's the same thing for me. I look at this blob of words on my computer or written here and I start to look at it and I'm like, that that's a song or that's a symphony or there's a, there's a, there's a pacing, there's a rhythm, there's something.